Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Different Church Online Service. Whether you're watching on YouTube or listening to the podcast, we want to thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Drew, and I'm excited to be tuning in with you. But before we hop in, I want to let you know of a few ways that you can stay connected to our church. If you're interested in how to be a part of or give to the church, you can do so at our website, dfrnt.church, and then just follow the tabs from there. Now, if you're like me and do everything via social media, then you'll want to find us on whatever platform you use the most, and then follow us there to stay connected. All right, now before we hop in, we're in a series called Do It For The Vine. This is where we walk through vines from back in the day and see how God can speak to us through them. It's gonna be a crazy series. Okay, now that's enough of me preaching. Let's hop into the message. January, February, March, April, May, June. Jason Derulo. Taco. They got a new thing called free shav free free shavaka do. You know what? I'm about to say it. Okay. So, I don't care that you broke your elbow. Church, everybody in house, how are we feeling this morning? Are we good? Are we good? Are we good? Are we good? Everybody online, whether you're watching on YouTube, listening on the podcast, maybe you got here from TikTok, MySpace, I have no idea, man. I just want to say thank you. Listen, I just want to say thank you for being a part. I had somebody comment not too long ago that was like, this series is too fun. And isn't it kind of weird how like church and fun don't exist together? Like we're not, you're not allowed to like turn up in church you're not allowed to like talk about like fun things. Like you're not allowed to, those, can I like release you from something? Sin is always fun, but fun isn't always sin. We've been taught anytime you enjoy something, the devil's in it. How am I supposed to shout about the goodness of God if I can't enjoy it? How am I supposed to enjoy my spouse? How am I supposed, and that's a lot of, a lot of, ooh, this is good. This is, we're already preaching. This is good. A lot of us don't know how to enjoy the people of God because we've been taught that anything that's joyful, it comes from the enemy. A lot of us don't know how to enjoy our spouse because we don't have joy. It's not that they're the problem. It's I have a problem finding joy. It's not this situation's the problem. I don't know how to activate joy. I don't know how to walk in joy. And as a church, did you know seriousness is not one of the fruits of the Spirit? Do you know preaching a three-point PowerPoint sermon about Jesus isn't a fruit of the Spirit? Did you know playing worship music isn't a fruit of the Spirit? Did you know joy is a fruit of the Spirit. So is patience. But joy is a fruit of the Spirit. You know, there is nothing. Hear me, hear me, hear me. Some of y'all are trying to prove God is real. A lot of times your smile will do that for you. A lot of us wonder why people don't go to church when we invite them. They don't see no fruit in the church you go to. They don't see nothing changing in your marriage. Why would I go to your church? They don't see you smiling. Why would they go to your church? All they hear is you gossip. Why would I go to your church? All they see is you is kicking the ground. I hate my life. I can't pay these. They don't see fruit in the church, so they won't go to the church. A lot of times you're trying to prove God exists with your mind, not your smile. When God says, all I need you to do is smile, baby. All I need you to do is actually enjoy life. All I need you, you're trying to figure out how to, how to uh, argue with some atheists, how to, bro, ain't, just smile because they don't know how to. All you've got to do is walk in joy. But that's, listen, having knowledge is easier than having joy. Because all I got to do is listen to a podcast to get knowledge. I got to remember the cross of Christ to have joy. All I got to, all I got to do is listen to some podcast that tells me the three things that, to have joy, I've got to remember Jesus died on the cross for me. So no matter what you say about me, I'm approved by the cross of Christ. And when I get to heaven, I won't know you. I won't remember what you said. I won't remember the bills. I might see my landlord there. I don't know. But I've got joy because this is in my home. But you'll forget that and you'll lack joy. So you'll try to solve all the problems. Listen, you'll try to solve everything. But we're in a series called 
do it for the vine. And I got to be honest with you, I'm already excited for the next series. I've already, man, in my head, it's called Pixar. It didn't happen. And I'm ready, like miracles. Like I really believe our church is going to experience miracles like we ain't never seen before. And I think I kind of believe in miracles for other people. I think miracles happen in Africa, not in America. That's a lie from the pit of hell. They just don't happen how you want them to happen. Um, But until then, we're in a series called Do It For The Vine. And I think that this whole series has been how do I find joy? How do I find Jesus in everything, not just Sunday morning? Because I'm really good at finding Jesus on Sunday morning and then I take it. Oh, let me take my suit off. I'm going to the club. Let me take my suit off real quick. I'm going to the bar. Let me take my, my church shoes off real quick. Let me take my church hat. Sunday morning is not something I put on to show people that I am a Jesus follower. You just might see me pop out on Sunday morning. This is not the, this is not the peak of my relationship with Jesus. Right now, you see me. This is what you see of my relationship. This isn't all of my relationship. But we've gotten it confused, and I pop out to show people that I'm still a Christian on Sunday morning. Uh Uh-uh. The other morning, my daughter, I'm I'm in the bathroom, and I'm getting ready, and my daughter walks in, and she's brushing her teeth. And I was going to put some stuff in my hair, so I take my wedding ring off, and I put it, like, on the the counter, and her, her eyes got so big. She said, Dad? I said, what? She said, are you not married to Mom right now? I said, what? She said, the ring. Everything she knows about our relationship, she's seen on TV. What? The ring means a lot on a wedding day. When somebody's on TV, when they see the show, you get a ring. That means you're married. Me and my wife know this ring is in top 50 things that make us married. This ring is just something you see. It's not what we do. How many times on Sunday morning we make church, we make Sunday morning the peak of our relationship. You see me pop out on a Sunday morning. That's just what I'm showing you in my relationship with Jesus. You should see the prayers behind the scene. You should see the love behind the scene. You should see the study. Just like you may see a ring on my finger about my wife. You better know I'm praying for my wife. You better know I'm loving my wife. You better know I'm talking to my wife. But that's all we want to do is make church something we wear, Jesus and aesthetic. And we don't do that here. Uh Uh-uh. You watch online, you want something like cute. Oh, Tyler does do it for the vine. That's really cute. No, we are really diving into this word. Tyler is all about Jesus. Ain't nothing else. I don't care about nothing else. If it's not Jesus, bump it. I don't care who you're voting for. Jesus, bump it. I don't care how much money you make. If it's not about Jesus, bump it. I don't care how many followers you got. I don't care how many followers I got. If it's not Jesus, bump it. I don't care how many people follow me on the ground. What? What? It's about Jesus and nothing else. My life will always be about Jesus and nothing else. If you have a Bible, we turn to Matthew chapter 13 as we hop into do it for the vine. As we hop into it, and I think that as, well, oh, snap, I almost forgot the vine. What? As we get in, this is probably the, the vine I quote the most. This is, this is probably my all-time favorite vine uh, in the world. So if you would, team, would you roll it? Hey, I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. I was too busy blocking out the haters. Oh, sorry, couldn't see ya. Blocked you out. And some of you guys are like, what just happened? That was like five seconds. That's what Vine is. If you're too young for Vine, if you're too old for Vine, Vine was six seconds and that's it. But whenever somebody starts talking, when you get that email on your computer, you better put those spoons in your eyes. Mm, Blocking out the haters. I've got to change my vision though. How I see situations, how I see people, and how much time I give people. Many times, we've given too much of our time to the wrong people and wonder why we feel in the wrong season. Boy, I'm not talking today. Can I preach this morning on my need for approval? Your anointing does not require human approval. You know why you're anxious? Because you thought 
when you got anointed by God, you would get man's approval. And anxiety means I'm worried. And the moment God gave you the anointing, there was nothing to worry about because you got his approval. But you're anxious about your anointing because you didn't get man's approval. But you got the approval on the cross when Jesus died for you. But now you're walking anxious in your anointing because you didn't get man's approval. But man's approval is not required for God's anointing. And you've got it mixed up right now. You thought the moment I, you thought when I got into church, everyone would like me. You thought the moment I got married, everyone would like my marriage. You thought the moment you got a new job, you thought that, oh, this is good. You thought the moment you became the boss, they wouldn't treat you like the old boss. No, they just hate bosses. And you were one of them. You thought, nah, I'm the senior, like, listen, I'm the pastor. Nobody's going to hate me. I'm cool, bro, everybody hates me except for my wife and my kids and that's all that matters I need approval before I walk in my anointing I need your cosign I need your feature before I do what God called me to do and God's like bro that is holding you back like you couldn't ever imagine you waiting on your family to join what you're doing you waiting on your best friends to listen to the music that you've been making You waiting for your cousins to support the business that you just started? You waiting on, God did not call them. He called who? You online. He called you. So can we hop into the word? Because this isn't a Tyler thing. This was a Jesus thing. You think you're the only one that gets rejected. Jesus got rejected. If even Jesus, the perfect man, never sinned, perfect preacher, perfect storyteller, raised people from the dead, healed the sick. If they rejected Jesus, what makes you think they're not going to reject you? But I thought when I got into church, everyone would like me. But now I don't get insecure when people reject me. I get inspired because now my ministry looks more like Jesus. Now I look more like Jesus when you don't like me. You th- oh, you thought you not liking me was going to get me hurt. It made me more excited because now I look just like my Savior, Jesus Christ. Now I look just like him. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I'm blessed and highly favored. You thought you, thought you did something spitting on me. They spit on Jesus. But I'll wait. I'll wait for people's approval. So can we hop into the word? Because this isn't just a Tyler thing. This was a Jesus thing. You know one of the reasons though, can we talk about the word just for a second? Because this is, this is the most precious thing in the world and it's free 99. You ever walk to a hotel? You can just get a free one. You just steal it. What do they call that? The five finger discount. Didn't they? Maybe that's old ghetto Tyler coming out. That's not godly, Tyler. I'm a mog. I'm a man of God. I am, I, am walking in the, I am walking in the grace of God today. But I think a lot of times we lack joy because we, don't, we haven't eaten. We haven't eaten. I've been married to my wife for 11 years. And I've picked up on something over the last 11 years. She could be the most stressed person in the world. Anxious. Worried. Doubting. Bills piling. If I take her to a fast food restaurant and she's got a burger in her hands, here's the move she does. I've seen it for 11 years. She'll take a bite and she'll shimmy. (laughs) She doesn't even know. She. I've been watching her do it for 11 years. She takes a bite. (laughs) Bills haven't moved. Stress ain't no different depression hidden but the moment I take this bite she finds a little joy in the midst of it why she was hungry what if it's not the bills what if you're just hungry what if it's not the stress boy you're just hungry what if it's not the friends you're just hungry what if it's not the anxiety you're just hungry and to find joy in the midst of it you just gotta hop into the word but you don't want to spend time in the world, word, but you want the joy from the word. Make it make sense? Make it make sense? So can we, can we read? Can we, can we shimmy a little bit this morning? Hey, 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 hey. I just want everyone to start swaying. Yeah, yeah. Nah, we're stopping. We're stopping. Online, we're serious. 
Matthew 13, verse 57. You probably ain't never heard this passage before. Verse 53, it starts. When Jesus had finished telling these stories and illustrations, he left that part of the country. He returned to Nazareth. Look at this. His hometown. His home church. Mm. When he taught there in the synagogue, everyone was amazed and said, where does he get this wisdom and the power to do miracles? I wish the story stopped there. I wish Tyler's ministry stopped there. I wish my life stopped there. What does it say in verse 55? Then they scoffed. He's just the carpenter's son. And we know Mary, his mother, and his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. All his sisters live right here among us. Where did he learn these things? Because I didn't get what he got. Oh, you ever had just, this ain't in my notes. You ever had some bitter people around you because you got blessed and they didn't? A lot of people like you getting blessed as long as they get blessed along with you. A lot of people like your success as long as you don't succeed past them. A lot of people like your ministry as long as they get to be a part and critique your ministry. Many people are fine with you staying around as long as you don't make them look bad. I got to get around people that want me to look good. And when I get there, I'm pulling up. But you want you, when I get there, you want to pull down. I'm not doing it. We're not having it. Jesus didn't allow it. He kept moving. Okay, I'm done. All his sisters live right here among us. Where did he learn all these things? And they were deeply offended that people were healed. These, th these parts aren't in my notes. These are just some, I'm just talking. And they were, how are you going to get mad that Jesus is doing miracles? Because it's not them doing it. How are you going to get mad at Jesus healing the sick? Because you didn't gain no clout off it. You didn't get paid off it. How many I was excited for this message. And they were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. We're talking about Jesus. We're not talking about Paul, Peter. We're not talking about Jonah, Noah, Moses. We're talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of the Lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And they, what does this say? They refused to believe in him. Then Jesus told them, talking to his disciples, a prophet is honored everywhere except where? In his hometown and among his own family. Some of that scripture right there is going to release you. That right there is going to release something in you. The need of approval from the people that are closest to you. I, I really did as I was writing this message. Or in verse 58, it says, and so he did only a few miracles there because of what? Their unbelief. As I was writing this, I really felt like somebody in their spirit really did need this. And I think it was me. As I began to write this, I think I needed this in my faith. As people begin to follow, as people begin to comment, as people begin to weigh in, as people begin to talk. I had to remind myself that Jesus had the same problems. These are not devil problems. These are not satanic problems. These are not problems that I did and I created. These are problems that happen when you follow the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's go back to verse 53 because I want to teach a little bit on some context. When Jesus had finished telling these stories, and you're going to act like this part means nothing, but until you read the context, it means something. When Jesus had finished telling these stories and illustrations, he left that part of the country, we stopped there. Tyler, what? Do, that ain't nothing good. What, what do you mean he left a part of the country? How's that? He left where he was celebrated to go to his hometown. Where he just left, thousands of people listened to him and received him. And Jesus left where he was celebrated to go where he was called. You know what I like to do? I like to end my ministry right there. I stayed in the part of the country that everybody liked me. I stay in the part of the country that everybody loves me. But God didn't call you to stay somewhere. He called you to go somewhere. 
I don't stay where I'm celebrated. I go where I'm called. And oftentimes God will call you places that people don't want you to be. How you handle that, that's up to you. How you do that, that's up to you. But Jesus is a better man than me. I got thousands of people. They're giving money. They're doing all this. They're following me on the gram. I'm going to just stay right here. I'm going to post up. I like this. But God said, no, I need you to go here too. I need you to move somewhere else. I need you to pray for somebody that you know don't want nobody praying for them. I need you to talk to that cousin you know doesn't want nothing to do with you. They don't want nothing to do with your ministry. They don't want nothing to do. I want you to go to them. Even if they reject you, I still want you to go to them. But I'll stay where I'm celebrated. And you know what that looks like? That looks like a circle of people that don't go nowhere. You know what that looks like? That looks like I do the same thing every single Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday night because the squad's turning up and we're going there. And then after three years of doing it, I realize my circle is walking in circles. Many times if you feel like you're walking in circles, look at your circle. Look at who you keep walking with. Look at who you keep talking with. Look at who you keep moving with. Look at who you keep spending time with. And you'll find yourself doing this right here. Where are we going? Okay, we're going to the club. Okay, cool. Oh, we're going to the bar. Okay, cool. Yeah, let me, now I'm broke. Okay, but now we're going to the club. Okay, cool. Now we're going to the bar. Okay, cool. I just found out that my circle put me in circles. And I don't need that because God's taking me somewhere. And if you think I'm stingy, sorry. Sorry, because my anointing and my calling is bigger than this thing right here. I'm called to reach more than four people that like me. I'm called to reach millions and millions and millions of people that don't know the gospel of Jesus. Can't stay here. I'm sorry. But I don't look for people that get me out of my circle. I'm not a people person. I don't like talking to people. I don't like walking my calling. I don't know that I like that. I like this comfortability here. Because I know a lot of times you'll stay, ooh, a lot of times you'll stay in the circle because you're scared what the circle will say when you leave the circle. Many times you only go to the family reunion so the family reunion doesn't talk about the people that are not at the family reunion. You keep going to that church because you're scared that church is going to keep talking about you when you're not at the church. So you keep showing up at the church, not because you're called, but because you're scared. God did not call you to to stay somewhere because people are there. He called you to go somewhere because he called you to go there. But you'll stay in a circle so the circle doesn't talk bad about you. They already are. Can I tell you right now? There is a group chat that you're not in. Just like you have a group chat that one other person is not in. They did not switch up on just, they didn't, it's you two and I've got to move. I got to move on, but I've got to find a circle. But you know what people say, like what people say now, you got to match my energy. I just need people to match my energy. Do not match my energy if my energy is unbiblical. Challenge my energy, don't match it. Because if you match it, I'm not going where God called me. But I just want someone, if you see me at the club, do not match my energy. You see me at the bar, do not match my energy. You see me puffing on something I have no business, do not match my energy. When my energy is unbiblical, challenge my energy so that I can get where God's called me. I just want someone to match my energy. That's why your energy is not taking you nowhere. How has that gone? Haven't hired nobody new for your business. Business not making no money. My life's not doing nothing. My life's not moving nowhere. Because you just want people to match where you're at. Not challenge for where you could go. Musicians, let somebody tell you your song sucks. Don't have them match your energy and tell you everything's good all the time. Business owners, allow somebody not to match your energy, challenge your energy. Married couples, you guys are not the greatest married couple that's ever existed. Allow somebody to not match your energy, challenge your energy. I don't want to be where I'm celebrated. I want to be where I'm called. And I need people because I can't pull it out of myself. I need people to know how to pull it out of me. And you've got to get around people that do it. So what did you, that's what I'm saying. When you don't read the word fully, you would have just, we'd have just skipped that sentence right there, bro. That's a lot. How many times do I stay where I'm celebrated? Do I stay in the same group chats? Do I say, but I'm not going anywhere. Jesus went. When Jesus had finished telling these stories and illustrations, he left. 
that part. He left the group chat. Verse 54. He returned to Nazareth, his hometown. When he taught there in the synagogue, what does it say at first? Everyone was amazed. And Anne said, watch what they said. Where does he get this wisdom and the power to do miracles? I don't want to stay here for a super long time, okay? I feel like we've been bouncing. When he returned to Nazareth, his hometown, when he taught there, everyone was amazed at first. Everyone likes when you first take a step. They don't like when you keep stepping. You know why? Everyone's taking the first step. Very few people keep stepping. You know how many people have started a business and put it down? You know how many people have started a ministry, put it down? You know, I'm fine with you starting. Don't just keep going. Don't keep praying for me. Don't keep preaching to me. Don't keep going to church because it's revealing I'm not. People love your ministry when you need them for your ministry. People love your calling when you need them for your calling. But the moment you tell them God supplies my every need and I don't need you, I'd like you, I don't need you, they'll leave because they'll start questioning your calling. They'll begin to critique their calling the moment they can't help you with your calling. The moment you begin to move in what God called you to do and the moment you go, I'd love to have you, but I'm moving whether you move or not, they'll begin to critique it rather than walk alongside you and help it. Jesus never one time followed his followers. He never one time asked the disciples, what should I do? You're looking for everyone else's validation and approval to figure out what you're supposed to do next. Don't. Did God call you? You move. Did God speak it over you? You move. And if they follow, cool. If they don't, cool. It wasn't, where I go is not contingent on who comes with me. The creator of the universe lives inside of me. When I begin to walk in my calling, this is, everyone was amazed and said, where does he get this wisdom from? And can we go to verse 55 real quick? Because I think this is the moment. I like when the sermon stops there. I like when my ministry stops there. I, th- I like when people are amazed about me. I don't like when people begin to question me. I don't like when people begin to doubt me. I don't like when people begin to talk about me. I don't like that. It never says Jesus even listened to it. It never said Jesus even spent time convincing them. Jesus just did what Jesus did. He never waited on somebody else to co-sign or give him any approval. His anointing wasn't required. So what does it say they did? Then they scoffed. They laughed. And what does it say right here? He's just the carpenter's son. No, he's not. He's the son of God. You saw the carpenter's son. You see me born in East Nashville. You see me, I'm this guy's son. I'm this guy's uh, son. I'm this girl's son, whatever. No, I'm not. I'm the son of the most high God. But many times we'll allow people with physical eyes that can't see the spiritual thing God put inside of us to rob us of the spiritual thing God put inside of us. And I just kind of wrote down, this is just kind of a side note. You are not your family. You have a family. You're not your family. Do not allow the past sins, blessings, the cool things, the bad things, that you are not them. Jesus was not a carpenter's son. He was the savior of the universe. But when you surround yourself with people that can't see something inside of you, You will always doubt the thing inside of you. But you want to get around people that hype up the things outside of you. I don't care that you want to go out on Friday night. You're looking at me as my dad's son, not the son of God. I don't care that you want to do this. I don't care that you want to go here. You're looking at me as my dad's son. You're looking as my mom's daughter. I'm not my mama. I'm a daughter of the most high God. 
I'm not the past sins. I'm breaking the curses in the name of Jesus. I'm creating blessings in the name of Jesus. I'm not my family. I have a family. I have a family now. But when you surround yourself with people that can't see that, you'll always have people that can only see the outside of you. And I think in Jordan, if you want to come play, I think it was C.S. Lewis that said, I'm not a body with a spirit. I'm a spirit with a body. Don't get it twisted. I got a couple tattoos. I got that. None of that matters. When we get to heaven, you're going to see my spirit doing this right here. I'm just floating. I'm just flying. Don't get wrapped up in the followers and the money and none of that. Don't get wrapped up in it. That's not me. I'm not my family. I'm not my daddy. I'm not my mama. I'm none of that. I'm a child of the most high God. And whenever you see me, know that I'm going to be preaching what God called me to preach. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to love you. I'm going to spend time with you. Even though you don't like it, you're going to get this ministry, boy. You're going to get this ministry, boy. You're going to get it because God called me to it. Then they scoffed. He's just the carpenter's son. And we know Mary, his mama, and his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. We know them all. I'm not them. I'm not them. I'm not who you follow on the gram. My wife is not Pastor Tyler's wife. She is Ryan, called by God. My daughters are not Pastor Tyler's daughters. They are Salem and Asher. They're about to change the world because I've been praying over them every single night. I am not my family. I am not the people I hang out with. I am not the people that follow me. I'm not the people that hate me. And I'm not the people that like me. I am a son of the most high God. And many of us, we get a trap. We get a twisted because I'm who you say I am. I'm not. I'm not my past mistakes. Don't Google me though. I'm not the dude that got locked up. I was, now I'm not. But I think we've convinced we're confused. I'm anointed when I gain approval. I'm, I'm good at what I'm doing when people like it. So Jesus was a failure. That's a question. Not nobody stayed with Jesus. Did he fail? Everyone spit on him. Did he fail? Everyone talked about him, mocked him, made fun of him, canceled. Did he fail? So what makes you feel like a failure when no one's around you? You needed their approval so that you could walk in your anointing. But that's not true at all. Having followers does not make you anointed. Having money doesn't mean you're blessed. Having a lot of people like your post does not mean your post was valuable. If anything, it takes anointing to preach when no one's following you. It takes anointing and blessing to preach when no money's in your bank account. It takes, and what does the Bible say? Heaven rejoices not when a thousand people give their life to Jesus. Not when a hundred people give their life to Jesus. Not when ten people give their life to Jesus. When even one person gives their life to Jesus. But I want to sing and preach to thousands but won't do it to the one I got today. Don't confuse approval and anointing. I know a, I know a bunch of people that got a lot of followers ain't taking them nowhere. I know a lot of people with a nice bed get no rest. I know a lot of people with some Gucci glasses don't have no vision for the future. I know a lot of people that go on vacation every single week, got no joy. Do not confuse the outside with the inside now. Not a dollar in my pocket. I'm going to travel and preach the gospel of Jesus. Do not care. I'll pay it next month. I'll figure that thing out. Don't confuse it. Don't get it twisted now. Aren't you glad Jesus was rejected? It kind of makes me feel okay with where I'm at right now. Aren't you glad people refused Jesus? 
it makes me relate to him a little more now. But there will be a moment where you'll have to wrestle with your rejection. You'll have to wrestle with the people you thought were going to be with you aren't with you. Am I doing it for them? When I first got saved and I started preaching, I felt called to preach. No church wanted to have me preach. They'd either say, you preach too much for our church. Or you teach too much for our church. Or your skin tone doesn't match our church. Or you, you preach a little loud for our church. Or you dress, you got tattoos. And I, I felt rejected by every church. When I first got started, not one church would let me preach. And I remember praying like three years into being rejected and rejected and rejected. I said, God, why? He said, because I want you to preach to people that have been rejected by the church. I don't, I want you to really live what you're preaching, Tyler. And that comes with rejection, just like the people that I've called to you to, that have felt. But I wanted to gain approval, but preach to rejects. He said, no, 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 no. Why did Jesus, why, why do people connect with Jesus so much? Because he was a reject. He was somebody that couldn't get approval. Well, they liked him when he gave them some money. He liked him when he healed them. Not whenever they, he had to carry a cross. Uh-uh. Then they scoffed. He's just the carpenter's son. How many times you try to talk to your friend about it, something and they just laugh? Oh, this is just a phase. This might just be me doing ministry to myself real quick. They thought this Christian thing was a phase. They thought this preaching thing was just a phase. They thought this prayer thing was just a phase. They thought this faith thing was just a phase. They thought it was cute at first. Then they got uncomfortable when I kept rocking with Jesus. Don't allow them. Because we think, oh, they don't mock me. They don't laugh at me. Yeah, they don't take you serious though. They brush it to the side like, oh, that's cute. Bro, I'm a grown man. You better stop. <laughs> Maybe it's just me though. Then they scoffed. He's just a carpenter's son. And we know his mama and his brother, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. All his sisters live among us. Where did he learn all these things? I didn't go to that school. And they were deeply offended. And what's it say? And refused to believe. Did Jesus not have the power to heal them? No. It was never Jesus' power that was a question. It was never Jesus' ability to do it. They refused to believe in his ability to do it. And the Holy Spirit is a perfect gentleman. He will never force himself on anybody. We have said this a million and four times. He does not force himself. His love is not a rape love. It is a love that comes from a heavenly father. He will never force himself on you. So the moment they refused to believe in Jesus, the power backed off. The power backed off. And you know what really challenged me? Jesus never convinced them to believe in his power. He never spent, a, a, he didn't do a series on why I'm powerful. Jesus didn't set up a whole tent revival. Listen, so you can be healed. He moved. He moved. You don't see it and you refuse it. I'm moving. How many times have I stayed? How many times have I stayed to convince somebody? The spirit of God is more powerful than I am. And if he's not doing it, I don't need to do it either. What does the word say? Dust the, dust your sandals off. Keep moving, baby. Fellas, dust the Jordans off. Keep moving. Ladies, dust the Burks off, keep moving. I'm blessed in the Birkenstocks, I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm not staying in this season. I'm not convincing nobody that I'm called. God called me called. Why would I allow someone with no phone plan to question my calling? Why would I allow somebody with no phone plan, no connection to the Heavenly Father, question the, God, the Heavenly Father that called me? I'm not doing it. I'm moving. And you can stay here or you can follow. Doesn't change anything. But I remember whenever I got into church, I, oh, I, I, my, I would try to do something. 
and it felt like nobody took it serious. Like no one ever, like I would do something, but it just didn't. And I used to get so frustrated. Guys, listen to me. I'm good, I promise. Till finally I had to learn, I, maybe it's not my calling, maybe it's how they view my calling. And I'm moving. But if I stayed there the whole time, I would always view myself as trash. I would always view myself as not enough. I would always view myself as I'm not anointed or as gifted as somebody else because they don't see it. God said, I don't need them to see it. I see it move. Can I, can I pull something out? Man, it's so ghetto, man. I'm so ridiculous. But this is really the life I lived back in the day. Hear me. When I was in middle school, uh, there were certain things that made you, like you would watch music videos and you see if somebody had spinners on their car, that meant they got it. But another thing that meant you had it was having a grill. If you had a grill, you were it. And when I'm in middle school, I've got no money. And I remember kids would just throw little gum wrappers in the trash. They just throw them away. But me and my friends, when they saw trash as a gum wrapper, you know what we saw? I saw a grill. I messed it up. Look at this one. Look at this one. Yeah. They saw trash. <laughs> this gave me a vision. Y'all think I'm playing. I felt like the best rapper in the world. I didn't see my two bedroom. I can't even do this. I need a real one. We're taking up an offering after this. <laughs> when I put that piece of trash in my mouth, I felt like a million bucks. I didn't see the two bedroom apartment with no food in the fridge. I really pictured myself as like the man. I pictured myself as the rat, like you couldn't tell me nothing with one of those in my mouth, but it's trash to another person. But to me, it gave me value. But to me, it gave me purpose. But to me, it gave me a vision that I didn't have before. What one person thought was trash and threw away, it gave me a purpose. The moment I got into church and I started preaching, the moment I got into church and didn't dress like everyone else, the moment I got in church and didn't talk like everybody else, the moment I got in church and thought a little bit differently than everyone else, they put me to the side. Hey, Tyler, that's cute. You do that over here. Here's what we're doing. And I remember telling God, my home church doesn't even believe in me. The, these Christians don't even believe in me. He said, maybe it's not that you don't have value. Maybe you're just around people that don't see your value. They don't see the thing inside of you that I see inside of you. And you're staying around people that only see you as trash when there are other people that will see the treasure that I put inside of you. It's not you, it's their vision of you. And you've got to get around people that see your calling that see what God's called you to do, that see the purpose God put on your life. But how many times have I been around people that refuse to see what God put inside of me? And then I'll question what God put inside of me. And what did Jesus do? They refused to believe in him. Then Jesus told them, a prophet is honored everywhere, except in, in his own hometown and among his own family. Doesn't that hurt? Can I be honest with you? Doesn't that hurt? When your own family doesn't support you? The friends that you thought would support you? The moment you say, I'm not drinking no more, and the first people to try to turn up with you are the people that you thought would try to hold you to it? I'm going to church. They're trying to pull you out. A prophet is honored everywhere except in his hometown 
and among his own family. And so he did only a few miracles there because of that, not because of his lack of power, not because of your lack of anointing, not because of your gift set, but because of their unbelief in it. Because of their unbelief. How many times have I been around people that can't see what I see? And I'll spend more time convincing them to see it rather than just going and seeing what God called me to see. Guys, come on. Let's move. Three years later, I wasted three years not accomplishing what God called me to do. And here's the dangerous thing. The devil loves when you feel rejected because you'll go try to find acceptance in the world. Well, I'll go where I'm accepted because I feel he loves when you get rejected by the church because he knows you'll go try to find acceptance from the world. And for some reason, we believe the world is more accepting than the church. The club always accepts me. The bar always accepts me. The smoke shop always, the website always accepts me when you're paying for it. The moment you, the moment you stop paying for the club, they will not accept you. The moment you stop paying for the liquor, they will not accept you. The moment you stop paying for all these things, they will not accept you. Jesus paid so that you could be accepted. Don't believe the lie that the world is more accepting than the church. They are not. It is not as long as you're paying. And Jesus says, I'll accept you. I don't need you to pay a dang thing. Just walk right here. I know they don't like you. I know they talk about you. I know you don't feel like you've been supported like you should keep moving. Stop following followers. Do what God put on your life. And it's hard. Can I be honest with you? As I'm navigating my life online and house, as I'm navigating my life, it's hard. But what God's put in me is too big to be worried what anyone else is doing. Saying, talking, texting, commenting. The other day I get on Instagram and, and I see a comment and I had time, right? Sometimes I don't got time. I had time. And the comment, he said, this is the worst preacher I've ever heard. I had time. So I click on his profile. He follows me. Why would you follow me if I'm the worst preacher that's ever existed? Why would you follow me? Many times people will follow you just to watch you fail. And you get frustrated that every single person around you doesn't believe in you. Many times the people closest to you will just be around you until you fail. And to tell you, I told you so. Can I tell you something real quick? I will fail. I have failed. I will continue to fail. God's grace is still good. You're going to follow me to watch me fail. I'll be the first one to admit I'm a failed man, but I live by the grace of God. So I don't. I said, but why are you following? How many people keep tabs on you on Facebook just to make, just to see if you're still married? Still happy, still in church, still saved, still doing that business. I said, wasn't going to work. What did Jesus do? He did only a few miracles there because of their unbelief and he moved on. Many of you guys need to move on. You need to move on from people. You need to move on from approval. You need to get comfortable with rejection. Move. There's this part in the, in the, Egypt, in the Egypt story when Moses is taking all these people to the promised land. And while they're in the desert complaining for years and years and years, finally God says, because of your faithlessness, you guys aren't going to get to the promised land until y'all die and your kids will see it. He didn't want their bitterness into the promised land. He didn't want their faithlessness in the promised land. So he had to allow for that to die off before they could go live in abundance. Many times the thing you're waiting on is waiting on someone else to die off in your life. How many of you guys know that sneaky link would destroy your marriage that you're praying for? 
So God's not going to give you the marriage until that one dies off. How many of you guys know God's not giving you the raise until your, your addiction to shopping falls off? Because he knows that would rob you of your future. I've got to allow things to fall off so that I can, and die off, so that I can walk in everything God called me to walk into. And approval is the biggest thing. Why would God allow for you to preach and lead and sell millions of things if you're going to get frustrated over the three people that don't listen? They don't like it. They don't watch it. I'm not ready yet. Maybe I'm not ready for everything God put on my life. Let me get this thing under control online. Let me get this thing under control because I know where God's taken me. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. We honor you. And God, I pray that you would just begin to move in our lives. But God, I'm sorry when I've looked to the people around me more than I've looked to the spirit inside of me. I get so hurt the moment somebody puts a rude comment on Facebook. I get so mad. Man, I watch who looked at my story to see if the whole, the whole reason I even posted was for this one person to see it and they didn't even look at it. Now I'm mad. Took me out of my, took me out of my, car, took me out of my skin, my mind. God, I'm done living for other people's approval and acceptance. I'm done. I'm not doing it. You didn't do it. In the midst of rejection, you kept healing. In the midst of rejection, you kept praying. In the midst of rejection, you kept preaching. I'm done. I'm done. And God, I pray that my life would look like your life. That I would be inspired in rejection, not insecure in it. That I'd keep walking it out even though people aren't talking to me, aren't following me back, aren't, aren't funding. None of that. I don't care. I'm going to do what you've called me to do. I'm going to walk where you've called me to walk. I'm going to talk how you've called me to talk. Lord, we love you so much. I love you so much. It's your name we pray and everybody say it. Amen. I can't act like everybody because I'm different. I can't walk like everybody because I'm different. I can't please everybody cause I'm different I can't mess with everybody so I'm sorry if I'm inconsistent I can't try to look like you, I just ain't got the time I don't wanna move like you, I walk a different line Yeah, they keep pulling me, yeah, they keep pushing me Yeah, they keep pulling me, and that's why I can't act like everybody cause I'm different I can't walk like everybody cause I'm different I can't please everybody cause I'm different I can't mess with everybody so I'm sorry if I'm inconsistent I can't act like everybody cause I'm different I can't walk like everybody cause I'm different